Hello everybody and welcome to a midweek video in which I discuss are you a man of Kent or are you a Kentish man or for the women out there are you a maid of Kent M-A-I-D or are you a Kentish maid now I fall under the bracket of being a Kentish man and how do I know that because in the Norman conquest as William the Conqueror was eking his way up the wonderful Isle of Ours that um there was records of the man of Kent standing firm against William the Conqueror, against a Kentish man who resist, who was slightly less resistant against the idea. And we know that traditionally we would separate. Uh, this would normally be a separation due to the River Medway. Now uh, that obviously comes through from Rochester Street, it sort of ekes its way around. And that would have normally been our divide. So if you were that size of the uh, River Medway, then like I said, uh, a Kentish man. Obviously, camera's on reverse, uh, the opposite side of the man of Kent. Uh, now, Raynham in uh, Medway would have been the dividing uh, main point of which that would have been the splitting point of which you would have been either or either side. And so Raynham would have actually been slightly neutral in between. Now, even if you're not from Kent, um, it's kind of interesting to sort of figure out where you would lie if you liked certain areas or locations of Kent. Now, unfortunately, if you're like me and like lots of Kent, I'm a huge fan of my great county that I was born in, that it would be very hard to distinguish. Now, I could blabber on about certain places that I love in Kent. However, you obviously know that I do videos mostly in Kent about historical places, although I do stretch across. And... That is no disrespect to any other county whatsoever, and I really mean that. All I just mean is that it's my place of birth, and I'm very lucky to have lived in this great county of ours, and especially growing up into it. I mean, if you're a history lover, I mean, it is literally the probably the place that has had the most amount of invasion, really. You know, from Julius Caesar onwards, really. Um, you know, this part, this southeast part of uh, our great isle that we live in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, an 1800s map and um, what it's going to do is really interestingly illuminate the idea that actually Kent was a lot it was um, it stretched out a lot further than we actually ever thought it would do now for me I truly believe that that should have stayed that way however I don't think that when London started swallowing bits of uh, our county up then you know you sort of lose that identity a little bit but Obviously, we are known for being the Garden of England. Debate that amongst yourselves, everybody, when I keep seeing property and development springing up everywhere. But yes, so for you out there in the comment section, are you a man of Kent or a maid of Kent or are you Kentish maid? Hopefully, you'll just enjoy this wonderful little bit of mappage. There you go. Wonderful word. Uh, a bit of blurb to obviously just show you what Kent used to be and how it was. So... There you go. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so this is the uh, 1800s map of the county of Kent. Now, as I sort of said before, this is something that I'm very, very passionate about because this is really the definition of what Kent should look like. Um, what you'll notice in the top left corner is obviously parts that actually are now based in London, such as Beckenham, Bexley, Biggin Hill, Bromley, Chislehurst, Deptford, Eltham, Greenwich, Lewisham, Orpington, Sidcup and Woolwich and North Woolwich. Now, what's really interesting about that is obviously you've got, if you're a football lover, for example, Charlton Athletic, for example, would have actually originally been a Kent club, such as Crystal Palace, the same as. Obviously, London swallowed that up. And the other interesting thing is that, obviously, if you take Greenwich, which is a very touristy hotspot in London, obviously, that would have been originally a Kent place so that would have been a touristy hotspot for Kent if you can believe such a thing. If you're in East Kent so if you're looking right across mostly into the purple pink area which would have been St Augustine's you would have had places such as Broadstairs, Ashford, Canterbury, Deal, Dover, Faversham, Folkestone, Herne Bay, Margate, Ramsgate, Romney, Sandwich, Sheppey, Sittingbourne, Thanet and Whitstable. Then if you're a West Kenter like I am then that would have covered places like Cranbrook, Dartford, Edenbridge, Gillingham, Gravesend, Hawkehurst, interestingly enough, uh, Headcorn, Maidstone, Northfleet, Rochester, Tunbridge Wells, Sevenoaks, Swanley, Tenston, Tunbridge and Westrum. 
So as you can see, this map hopefully illuminates it very easily for you just to sort of have a look and go, hey, that's kind of interesting. And I wonder where or if I was a Kentish man or a man of Kent. So hopefully that's cleared up a lot of things for everybody. As we all know that um, really the boundary stone that we now know would have been actually based in Raynham, um, which is actually, no, it would have been known as the Raynham Mark and it would have had a boundary stone. Um, it's, it says actually that originally um, this would have been near the Hops and Vine Public House, which is formerly the Belisha Beacon or Belisha Beacon. And uh, since that was replaced by that milestone, it traditionally marks the division of Kent into its eastern and western zones. Now, as you all are probably aware, that this wonderful county of ours has obviously had a series of invasions and I will be sure to be discussing that in a further video but for however long I keep doing this wonderful channel please stick with me and please know are you a man of Kent made of Kent or a Kentish man and if so feel free to leave it in the comments below and as always like share subscribe and click that bell thank you as always for watching and take care everybody because history matters bye